morning at 7 a.m. but we have pickup trucks today and I'm very excited because look what I have it's the Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison so I'm just uh, waiting for Bobby now to bring the competitor it's uh it's supposed to be GM's most capable off-roader so let's see how it does oh there's Bobby what the what the Oh my god. Seriously? What the fuck is that? It's a Jeep. It's a gladiator. That's not a Rubicon, it's an Overland. It's all they had. It's the king of the off-road world. This should have no problem competing with the Colorado. I don't care what kind of tires it has. But it doesn't have no lockers, it has nothing. This one is like... But it's a Jeep. Go ahead. Obviously upset that this is not a Rubicon. Well, it's, only it's half. Overland with uh, Bridgestone Dueler tires, street tires. But I must admit, so far it's been pretty good. I mean, um, okay, limitations on the tires, but suspension feels great. Nice water puddle. Are we gonna make it through? I hope so because it'll suck in stock. I'll tell you that much. Oh, there it is. I really like the. Uh, I mean, even for those that are not looking to get into it and start lifting it and jacking it up, it's a very nice. Uh, calm setup it's uh suspension is nice soft no creaks and cracks i have to say it does feel very soft and refined it does it does smooth i mean i know it's not based on the wrangler but <laughs> it's uh it's a hell of a lot better than what the, the stock setup on the uh, jk was let me tell you a very funny story about uh, the gladiator and Tell me. the bison how they relate to each other okay so aev so American Expedition Vehicles, yeah. okay, the company that's basically armored that ZR2. They used to make um, a Wrangler-based pickup truck that they called the Brute. The Brute, yeah. That, that was the inspiration of the Gladiator, right? Okay. So now, they're like on the other side, because now they're armoring the, the Chevy, and we're in the Gladiator. <laughs> oh, is that how it came about? I didn't know that. See? But uh, like they switched sides. It makes sense, I mean. They did a good job with the Brute, that's for sure. Big engine in that one. I, I really love the stock setup. Like, I mean, I if I wasn't a hardcore off-road and I want to take somebody out, just have a little bit of fun, this is a great setup. Especially if you were in the Rubicon. Sorry. Yeah. The It just feels like a great vehicle. It's comfortable. I don't feel like I'm getting tossed around too much. My head might say differently, but it's <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind checking it out in a little bit on a higher speed just to see how it absorbs all the the bumps and the whoops and the here we go. Oh boy, fix yourself. Ugh. Grab the walkie. That was surprisingly <laughs> very smooth. Hey, it, it it didn't it didn't feel out of control at all. I have like, to say this feels very soft. Very very soft, and that's what you kind of want out of an off roader. You don't want to be stiff. You're not taking corners and tracking the thing, but. Uh, and you don't feel the weight. One of my biggest thoughts was, you know, obviously we got a bed in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought we would feel the, the the weight difference and feel the the length of the car or the truck, or the off roader or the this. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I I don't feel anything awkward. It doesn't feel weird. It feels really 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 good actually. Very planted. So does it feel different than the Wrangler, but just because it's longer? Like, can you tell the difference? No, if I uh, somebody blindfolded me, stuck me inside, and told me don't look behind you, I wouldn't have been able to tell that I'm in a, a Gladiator versus a, a Wrangler. I wouldn't have been able to tell it at all the difference. It feels really, really good. So you know that this one lines up perfectly in terms of price with a ZR2 with the Bison. So they're both. So that's sixty thousand Canadian. This is sixty-three thousand Canadian. Okay. And it's still not even the Rubicon. It's yeah. That's the Rubicon right. would probably be. A little bit more. I think that's closer to the 70 mark, isn't it? Yeah. Really surprised on how well this is. This is doing. You should see how nice this is on the road. Is it? 
very smooth and much quieter than the ZR2. Yep. Oh, that's a fantastic ride. And I mean, I, obviously with the Jeeps, you're, you're going to have the aftermarket companies that give you a lot of accessories and a lot of upgrades. I mean, Mopar, from a little bit of research I did, Mopar itself, like factory there upgrades are, are, are fantastic on this. Woo! Good thing I'm short. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> a little toss around. <laughs> My titties are shaking. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. This is my, I gotta say, my first drive with it off-road. And, uh, it, it feels amazing. I, <laughs> I, I really like it. Oh, so after all, it's not a very big problem that we don't have the Rubicon since we're not really actually using blockers and stuff. Like, no, we don't need that kind of stuff on this trail. This yeah. makes me upset because I've only had my Ram for a month and a half, and I kind of want this. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's gonna kill me. Oh, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this vehicle. I, 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 I like it. It's a perfect. I think it's a perfect truck for. Anybody that, that wants to get out, do a little bit of overlanding or weekend trail riding with the family. Or what does overlanding family? mean? Let's explain that to people. Fair enough. The overlanding is considered to be um, you set up your truck so you could essentially live off of the grid for a certain amount of time. Primarily focused towards exploration, camping, outdoors. Uh, overlanding can all... You can almost assume that anybody that's overlanding is going to have what's called a rooftop tent, which I like the fact that you can put it on top of this with some roof drills. And it's essentially a different form of camping where you take a road that's not paved. Where How can I get to where I want to go without taking any sort of pavement or highways or main roads? Which is fantastic. So that's what this is geared for. It doesn't have the lockers because with overlanding, you don't really get into rock crawling per mm -hmm. se and all that fun stuff. You more just the ability to be in the exactly. countryside, right? You tackle some mud, you can get through it. You want to tackle small rocks, you can get through it. It's, uh, it's honestly, this is a, if you don't need a full-size pickup truck because you use it for work, hauling stuff, when you need crazy payloads and towing capabilities, this thing's great. <laughs> I love it. It is kind of ugly, though. Well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> a lot to be said about that I mean <laughs> yeah sorry but sure some of the girls we didn't date it didn't go based on its pure looks some of them had personality it's for me <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> not me I, I, I'm not the kind of guy that judges people based on their looks but if you have a great ass chances of you being a bad person are got five feet of ass on this one here man <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. This no, has a nice uh, tucked in ass though. Like if you park it right next to the ZR2, this one feels a bit smaller. And it's definitely not European. Fitter. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's kind of nice ass. Uh, it's good. I like it a lot. All right. Let's go grab the other one and see how it compares. Absolutely. Now be fair, Bobby. I'll try. Be What's nice. that noise? <laughs> what about that noise? Does that noise sound right? It's the keys, because oh. you have to have them there. You can't have them in your pocket. I guess I should be fair. I, I like... Uh, you know this thing has like the Multimatic... What's the acronym? D-E-S-S-V or something? Dampers. I think it's called the Triple S. Shitty stupid suspension. No. <laughs> it's not that bad. I guess I'm biased because I... I I mean, Bobby loves Jeeps. I love Jeeps. But I must admit, I was really gung-ho before I bought the Ram because I needed something with more space than what my JK had. And I wanted it to have a bed and good towing ability. Um, I didn't like the Gladiator's looks, which is one thing that sheared me away from it, which we established. But I was really gung-ho on this one because I really loved the fact that AV was the one that was configuring it. But now that you have seen what the Gladiator is like, now you don't care about the looks. No, do I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. No. I, I like the essence of the ZR2, especially the Bison Edition, because it's, you know, it's got certain things that are really nice. It comes fact, well, factory. The ZR2 Bison Edition comes with the rock rails. Incredibly yeah. important when you're off-roading. 
it's com this truck is completely armored, right? It has exactly. skid plates under everything. Totally, completely okay. covered, completely immune. However, driving it right now, I don't have the confidence that I did driving the Gladiator. The suspension is great. It's a little too stiff for my liking for a factory setup. Mm -hmm. If that's what you like and you like getting completely and totally tossed around when you're going through a trail, that might be your thing. Um, I am hearing a lot of creaking and knocking from the suspension though. Exactly. It's like, I, it feels like a bushing is loose or something. It, there's a lot of noise coming in <laughs> to the point where you're, you're just like, oops, did something just happen? I, and I'm not trying to trash the vehicle by no means, but... And for a video, it's really annoying that you can't eliminate the sand track from the key. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But uh, going Damn over it. this rut and rough section that we just went through, you know, I, I felt okay blasting through that at, you know, 50, 60K with the Gladiator. Not feeling it as much with this one, primarily because of the suspension. I know it's, it's a too hard. You, you know that you're going to bounce around too yeah. much if you go fast. Like you, uh, on this one, I feel like you have to air down in order to create a little bit more of a cushion versus... Air down meaning... Oh, sorry, you got to deflate the tires the and drop the pressure in the tires in order to gain a little bit of that cushiony effect that you'd want to see for comfort reasons, really, when you're going the over. The tires, though, are very different, right? So the Gladiator is on Bridgestone Dueler, which are basically road tires. Yep. This one is on Goodyear Wrangler, is funny enough. Which uh, are a good off-road tire. I mean, that's, that's you know, it, it's not a bad all-terrain tire at all. I'm um, wondering, is Goodyear going to make a Gladiator tire now? Since they made a Wrangler. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bridgestone Gladiators, ATs. Okay. I do love the fact that it has lockers. Okay. I do love the fact that it's got lockers um, front and back, which is fantastic because you you want to have that. Not that. You may go through your whole time not using it, but that one time that you need it, it's good to know that you have it there. Like here, we don't need any of that today. No, we don't need any of that. It's not that bad. But it's definitely a good thing. I mean, lockers, lockers can save the day. They can absolutely save the day and make the difference between, oh, man, I'm really beep right now so well or I'm gonna get through what I need to get through uh, I do like the fact that it's got recovery points like the gladiator a lot of pickup trucks that passes off-road vehicles they don't even have recovery points yeah. this has proper frame mounted recovery points. and the AEV bumpers especially the front one has a uh, it's pre-prepared for a winch oh is so it okay. can go there quite easily I do like that uh, I do yeah. like the availability of uh, modifications that are available for this one. I did a little bit of research and I love the fact that you can buy a lot of accessories to enhance the ability the car already has. Yeah. Uh, from an off-roader perspective, uh, I, I think this is a great uh, overland vehicle. Like you can you can load it up, it's got a good payload, it's got all that and it hit the trails. However, if you are looking at doing anything in the rock crawling aspect of it, may not be the so My there's choice. one thing about rock crawling. So the, the mounting points of the rear shock absorbers, yep. they stick out quite a lot. Now, GM says that they're really reinforced. So in case, you know, you do get one smashed against a rock, it's not going to break. The problem, though, is it can get you stuck on a rock if, yeah. you, are, if you end up hanging off of it. it. Hung up on that. Oh. And I mean, yeah, see what I mean? See, I was more comfortable. Like, this is probably as capable as, or even more capable than the Ragnar, but it's not... I'm not enjoying it that much. No, I, I, I don't want to go fast in this because yeah. I... You know, we're getting older, Jay. I know. Things hurt. Yeah. And I'm hurting. My uh, my titty oh, mass oh, is too heavy for oh, this, this oh, oh. hard suspension. <laughs> it does feel like it, it can take a beating, though. Like, for me, this one feels like it, it's going to take a lot more beating until it actually breaks. Yeah, possibly. There's that's a very, very, very like the gladiator will had a nice softness to it, but at the same time, that softness kind of tells you that okay, if you overdo it, something's gonna bottom out and break. Yeah, fair enough. No, Plus again. this one has better departure, breakover, and approach angles. Does it? Yeah, I much better, especially that, but... with these bumpers that are shortened on the sides. Well, and everything. yeah. See, the one clever thing that AV did, which is not like that on the uh, on the Jeep on the Overland, they actually concaved in the sides of the bumper in the front yeah. to expose more tire so that way you can take you can approaches the rock tire first as opposed to yeah. smack bumper first yeah. but uh, again it's not a bad car if you're a Chevy guy and, and you want to do some family traveling and you want to go some overlanding and a little bit off-roading by all means it's a great looking truck I love the way it looks 
Me too. Look wise, it looks mean. It looks menacing. For right me, accents. best looking truck right now. Absolutely. Maybe a close second with your Ram Rebel. Fair enough. Yeah. Which yeah. is also a very good looking truck. Yeah, I like the aggressive stance of that uh, of, of both of these cars. But speaking like, about mid sized, yeah, the Tacoma also looks the, the TRD Pro looks pretty mean. TRD Pro is nice. We we brought it here. We did yeah. a test the uh, against the what was it the, the Ranger. Yeah. We figured out Ranger. that it didn't have much on the Ranger. So in terms of off road ability. I think this is probably the most capable, unless you hit the, uh, <laughs> you get one of those shock absorber mounts stuck in a rock and then, oh bad. Yeah, bad. absolutely. Um, but yeah, the, the one thing that I, like right off the bat that you notice without, without, you know, having to really pay attention is the stiffness of the ride. Yeah. I mean, granted, okay, great, that would be fantastic on the road, but neither of these trucks are meant to take apexes. No, for sure no, especially, the ZR2 with these uh, all-terrain tires, yeah, they are they don't corner as well, they don't break as well. I don't know, they'll but roll over themselves before they, they do They anything. do much better in the mud over here. Yes, so. absolutely. Definitely a bit more confidence going through the mud here with these tires than I was with the uh, Bridgestone Duelers. Size, like it. You do feel the weight, I feel, on this one a little bit more than you felt on the Gladiator, given the fact that they're both mid-size trucks. How about um, the brakes, like, in an off-road context? Uh... Spotting any differences between two cars? I don't know, I haven't had the brakes on this one because I've been going so slow. <laughs> it's, it's a stiffer brake pedal. You do feel a little bit more feedback to your foot from it. The Gladiator does have a bit of a spongy yeah. brake, uh, which is I found that on the shoes. road, the Gladiator's brakes were a little bit, they feel a bit weak for the truck. I mean, if you stomp on them, they will stop the truck, but they don't give you that confidence that, okay, we got a lot of power behind this pedal. This yeah. one felt a little bit better, but yeah, that's for the on-road stuff. So this is armored, right? So you know that you can hit stuff and whatever and bottom out and not care that much. Mm -hmm. So how important of a factor is that for you versus the Gladiator right now that's like completely vulnerable, <laughs> this kind of stuff? Oh, uh, important, important. I, I don't care what car we're looking at, skid plates are essential. Um, there's nothing worse than, than 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 piercing an oil pan or peeling a diff cover or puncturing an evap canister or something like that. So the fact that they're covered is great. And I know that you can only get that with the Rubicon. The Overland yeah. doesn't have this good From the factory, but maybe From aftermarket. You can aftermarket, that. you can get the, anything you want. But it's essential. And I do appreciate the fact that you know, AV was approached. AV has such a solid history in the oh, off-road sure. community and in the jeeping community that they know their stuff. And it's not cheaply made, you know, made overseas in some weird place. Anyways, yeah. uh, stuff, it's good. Yeah. I, I like the quality of the AV. So you are buying quality when you get into the ZR2. There's no doubt about that. Just wish it was a little yeah. softer. Yeah, a bit softer would have been good. Yeah. Um, so I have to point out, the ZR2 Bison is by no means in any way whatsoever comparable to like a, a Raptor. Like the, the suspension travel is just not there. It doesn't have that cushiony, crazy, like... Absolutely not. Yeah. But the Raptor is in a class of its own. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are claiming to be Raptor fighters. Raptor's a Baja truck. Yeah. It's meant to go really fast over really rough terrain and keep and your keep coffee the driver and nice and <laughs> stable. <laughs> yeah. Right? I like what's happening travel. right now. Yeah. So, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, that one. Yeah. That, yeah. See, in the Gladiator, we didn't feel that much back no, there. No, no. I have to pee now. <laughs> <laughs> just... Alright, so, final question to wrap this one up. Yes. Off roading. Uh huh. Between. So, price wise, they're equal, right? So, okay. between this. And the Overland Gladiator, not even the Rubicon. Yeah. What do you pick? Overland. Prices for the Overland start at forty-nine thousand four hundred ninety-five Canadian dollars, which is already about two thousand dollars more than the ZR2. Prices for the Colorado ZR2 start at forty-seven thousand six hundred Canadian dollars. With the Bison package, though, and as it stands right here, it's about ten thousand dollars more. Starting off with the Gladiator. Under the hood, you get the 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar motor. It makes 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque, and it's mated to a very nice and smooth eight-speed automatic transmission. Of course, you have a transfer case, which you get a two high, four high, and four low, 
but unfortunately this Overland model does not have any differential lockers. Most importantly, this Overland comes on road tires. Those tires might put it at a disadvantage when we go off road against the ZR2, but on the road, it's actually really nice. The Gladiator is very quiet, very refined, and as we're describing the Jeep like that, things have changed, haven't they? Once again though, as a typical Jeep Wrangler, unlimited, elongated, equals Gladiator, keeping this thing in a straight line is a little bit difficult. Steering is kind of vague on center, but you know what? It's better than what it used to be for sure. The interior of the Gladiator is very nice and it's completely equivalent to the JL Wrangler Unlimited. The quality inside is not too bad. It's very Jeepy, it's still a Jeep thing. And ergonomically, you're gonna have to get used to things like the window switches being on the dash. The infotainment system supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's really quick to respond and one of my favorites on the market. The sound system is pretty boomy too. I like it. A big advantage that comes with the Gladiator as a pickup is that you still have the removable roof and removable doors. So if you feel like being cool, you can just take them off. The bed in the Gladiator doesn't stand out in any way. It's of average size of the segment, but it does have a very useful power outlet. You can use it for fridges or whatever you want, as long as they don't exceed 450 watts. Last but not least, the Gladiator is a little bit roomier compared to the Colorado. So passengers in the back are gonna be a little bit more happier on longer trips. The Gladiator on average has been using about 13 liters per 100 kilometers, but you know what, overall, if you do mostly city driving, both of these are gonna kill you on gas, but at least they run on regular. Performance-wise, the Jeep feels happier accelerating. The ZR2 kind of feels like it doesn't really want to do anything and it's like struggling to do everything, but at the end of the day, it is more powerful and ultimately, it might be quicker. Let's find out which truck is faster. We're gonna race both of them in four high so we take out the tire factor so we don't spin any tires and we'll see which one will hit 100 kilometers an hour first. When it comes to looks, I have to confess that the Gladiator ain't my favorite. It kind of feels like a very weird Wrangler with that butt thing stuck in the back. I'm not so sure. Both these trucks aren't for high speed on-road driving. They both lean and they don't like to be chucked into corners, so you better take it easy. But I have to say, both of them feel very safe and won't really tire you out driving them. They're nice rides. In terms of ride comfort though, the Gladiator totally annihilates the ZR2. Well, that might be a very unfair comparison because this is the Overland, that's the ZR2. If this was a Rubicon, it would probably be harder, but you know what, overall, the Overland is much more comfortable. The Colorado ZR2 on the road compared to the Gladiator is much easier to drive, but not as comfortable. It actually holds the lane and it goes really straight. The steering feels kind of nice, it has a good weight to it. The Gladiator, it's very light and very vague. This feels almost car-like. It's much more sure-footed. I actually prefer it to the Gladiator, even though it's a harsher ride, I like it. Under the hood of the Colorado ZR2 is the 3.6 liter V6 that makes 308 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque, and it's mated to a pretty good eight-speed automatic transmission. Another thing I like more in the Colorado are the brakes. The pedal feels firmer, the brakes feel stronger. In the Gladiator, sometimes I felt like the truck is a little bit under-braked. This one, I think, is better in terms of brakes. The interior doesn't strike me as fantastic in the Colorado. It is all hard plastic and the design is not fancy. However, unlike Bobby, I realize that this is a pickup truck, so I'm not seeking luxury. I don't care that the materials are not soft to the touch, but what I do care about is that I have almost absolutely no storage to put my things. I mean, there's this cup there. My phone doesn't even fit in the wireless charger. Okay, we have two cup holders. The doors have no storage. They have like little pockets that are this tiny. If I have something a little bit bigger, I have nowhere to put it. And that's a real complaint. In terms of technology, you get a good backup camera, you get a pretty decent infotainment system, a really good sound system, climate control, and heated seats. But you get all that in the Gladiator as well. 
One thing that stands out to me in the Colorado is that the heated seats, you can pick the heat either the seat bottom and the back or just the back. I don't know why you do that, but sure. My average fuel economy in the Colorado, it's actually 14.9. So the difference between them is not that big, but still this is worse on gas. The Colorado Bison Edition is really cool because AEV really armored the truck. They didn't do any massive intervention, so they haven't tuned suspension or anything. They gave it a nice set of wheels. We have 33 inch tires, Goodyear Wranglers. We have the, the truck sits about three, three and a half inches wider and it's two inches higher compared to a regular Colorado, but that's part of the ZR2 package and not the Bison. The Bison gives you these really cool bumpers that are the front one can accommodate a, a winch. They look really good because they have raised edges, so better approach and departure angles. And you do have these rocker bars on the side to protect the body when you're going off-road. One of my favorite features in the ZR2 are the Multimatic dampers. I understand they are firm, the ride is not the best, they don't compare to a Raptor from Ford, whatever, but they do work very well and ultimately they give the Colorado a lot of its off-road ability. You get front and rear differential lockers. You can put it in off-road mode, which locks the center. And then as long as the rear shock absorber mounts don't get stuck on anything, you're pretty much good to go. This thing is an off-road animal. Roominess inside the cabin is probably this much less than in the Gladiator. Some people were more comfortable here. Some people were more comfortable with the Gladiator. Personally, I think I had a little bit more room in the Gladiator, but they're pretty much on par. Another really good thing about the Colorado and the ZR2 is that you can get it with a diesel engine if you want. A 2.8 liter inline four cylinder is available with 184 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. So if you're looking for fuel economy, there's an option. As a work truck, the ZR2 is not really gonna impress you with the capacity or the size of the bed. It's a regular bed. It has a light on top and that's about it. Nothing spectacular, nothing to report on, but it's good. When it comes to looks, the exterior design of the Colorado is by far my favorite between these two. So if I would have to pick based on style, Colorado it would be. So to wrap things up, let's see how this category of mid-sized pickup trucks looks like now that the Gladiator is here. So number one, and the truck that I would personally buy, I know Bobby completely disagrees with me because it's a Ford and he hates the idea of Ford reliability for me. I can't know. I like the Ranger FX4. That would probably be my top pick. My second pick would be the Colorado ZR2. I personally like, I really like the way it looks. I don't mind the way it drives. It's not perfect by all means, but the fact that it's cheaper than the Overland Gladiator speaks to my heart and makes me want to want this. So price, money being a factor, the Colorado ZR2 has a lot on its competition. Number three in the segment, I would put the Gladiator. The Gladiator is a very likable thing, but it's not exactly for everybody, especially for people that don't like Wranglers. The Gladiator probably won't cut it. Number four is the always reliable and go-to Tacoma, especially the TRD Pro. I really like how that looks. I'm not a big fan of how it drives on the road, but you know what? Overall, it's a reliable, capable, affordable truck. I like it. And last but not least, I think the Frontier. If I'm forgetting something, well, it's probably not worth mentioning, so, oh well. Perfect. Perfect.